Matthew Buckley is my name. I fly fighter planes, and my call sign is Wiz. I'll go over every fighter jet in Top Gun, Maverick in detail. I saw the first Top Gun movie back in 1986. It was among the worst things I have ever experienced. Everyone aspired to be a Navy fighter pilot after seeing that movie, so I had to work even harder at my studies. Upon seeing the F-14 Tomcat, my initial thought was that it could be a target. F-14 A Tomcat enormous airplane, with enormous radar at the front and massive missiles. The Sparrow was a radar missile, the Sidewinder was a heat-seeking missile, and the Phoenix was a large stick that could shoot over a hundred miles into the distance. When the first Top Gun movie was released in the middle of the 1980s, the F-14 Tomcat was the best fighter available. Its task was to defend the carrier battle group as a whole against the Soviet Union's armada of bombers using fleet air defense. The F-14 Tomcat was a reasonably agile aircraft at the time it was built. An F-14? Even the ability of the to fly is unknown. Rooster was being kind, and I think he did a great job. It was also known as a bullet sponge. Therefore, getting an F-14 Tomcat airborne would be difficult even on a good day in the U.S. Navy, much less in a foreign nation without the same spare parts or maintenance personnel. Iran is the only country in the world that still uses the Tomcat as its official aircraft, but it would be a stretch, in my opinion, to be so tactically adept after not flying that jet for a few years. It's the most beautiful airplane on the globe, pure love. F-18 Hornet The F-18 Hornet is the first multi-role fighter attack aircraft. It is a single-seat, twin-engine aircraft with a maximum speed of Mach 1.7 or 1.8. However, the F-18 is also capable of carrying a wide variety of weaponry, including GPS-guided munitions. Additionally, the aircraft can be used as a tanker aircraft by adding gas tanks to it. The movie Top Gun, Maverick was masterfully crafted by its filmmakers. I was squirming in my seat and tensing my muscles, as if I were actually on the aircraft during the aviation scenes. Your senses are greatly enhanced when you're flying at that speed in an F-18 at 25 feet below the ground. It ends when you even sneeze. The dirt is kicked up by the aircraft because it is flying so low to the ground that the air is unable to move quickly enough to get out of the jet's path. That takes a very amazing level of talent. That maneuver was indeed flown by a former Blue Angel. Come on down, Coyote. What we refer to as G-O-O-C, or G-Loss of Consciousness occurs in coyotes. When you begin pulling several Gs for instance, at 8 J, I weigh 200 pounds, and it feels like a 1600 pound safe is resting on top of me. Your head is bleeding out. Therefore, to try to prevent yourself from passing out, you truly need to compress your abs and legs. And you die if you lose consciousness, or at least you did when I first started flying fighters. One system that we have today is the ground collision avoidance system. You will have a few chances to pull up in the jet. When it gets angry and you don't react, it will automatically level its wings and take off, taking you out of harm's way. Coyote, approaching. Coyote, coyote, get moving. About 3,000 hours were spent in this aircraft. Don't kill me, Susie. One of my first genuine loves, it's just a part of me. It is a part of my identity. When I see this aircraft, I can't help but smile. The Rolls-Royce or Merlin engine, as well as the elegant lines of the aircraft, make me happy. Mustang P-51 They are incredibly maneuverable for their generation, capable of 400 to 450 miles per hour. A fighter aircraft from World War II, the P-51 Mustang was capable of strafing enemy tanks during ground attacks and was also employed to escort bombers on their way to attack Germany. In actuality, Tom Cruise has his own. Unfortunately, a P-51 Mustang can only be purchased for a few million dollars. Owning and operating an aircraft is not inexpensive. Thus, while the F-35 has an intriguing appearance, it is not as attractive as the F-18 Hornet. Lightning EF-35A The F-35 Lightning has a maximum speed of Mach 1.6 or 1200 mouth. When you look at the airplane, you will see that it is an aerodynamic lifting body that can glide. Additionally, the lone engine turns. Thus, the nozzle moves to both fire weapons and cause the aircraft to turn more tightly in a turn circle. Consequently, the U.S. Abraham Lincoln, CVN-72, 
the ship I made my first deployment on in 1995, is where we first encountered the F-35 Lightning II. Without a doubt, the F-35 is a fifth-generation aircraft. In a sense, a lot of fifth-generation aircraft are self-contained strike packages. When I used to fly, we would have A-6S bombing, F-14 Tomcats exercising air superiority, and aircraft jamming. Many aircraft of the fifth generation combine all three of those features. They are capable of jamming the enemy's radar and communications through electronic warfare. They are also capable of flying from air to ground and vice versa. Furthermore, the stealth features are incredible because they are made of material that absorbs radar. Fifth generation airplanes feel a little squishy to the touch. They internalize the weaponry in addition to the aircraft's outside radar absorbent coating. Anything that hangs off a fighter jet and reflects radar energy is worth mentioning. Thus, a fifth-generation aircraft has internalized all of its weaponry. Thus, the Su-57 fell inaptly called given that they pilfered this. In a sense, this is the F-35 ski, Su-57 Philon. Thus, the F-35 copy-paste is basically what the Su-57 Felon is. Comparable electronic warfare capabilities and weapon systems. Rumbling engines, apart from helicopters. It is one of the few aircraft on the planet that can detect whether an infrared missile is locking up on it. Additionally, it can aim directly at the warhead, distant, laying or deactivating it, DIRCM, or direct infrared countermeasures, is the term for it. Dogfighting is rather uncommon these days. We already know that our adversary pilot has left his home and arrived at the air station. In modern times, a lot of things have broken down if you're in a dog battle. It always comes down to who could turn tighter in a dog battle. Given that the Su-57 is capable of carrying some quite powerful air-to-air -air missiles, it wasn't entirely plausible. Therefore, if I had been the Su-57 felon's driver, I would have pitched out of the dogfight's visual range, traveled a few kilometers, and then turned around to shoot Maverick in the face with a radar missile. However, I wasn't in should the Dark Star, maybe a fictional aircraft as portrayed by Maverick in Top Gun. Energetic music, Dark Star. We are taxiing using information alpha. This is Dark Star. It is possible that the Dark Star jet, which was created at the Scump Works, is real. The development of our black box aircraft is done at the Scump Works, which is located in the middle of the Mojave Desert. You could probably think of something that exists. It's likely being designed and built by boys and girls in an air-conditioned, windowless room with pizza and Mountain Dew. The SR-71 Blackbird serves as a sort of basis for the Dark Star aircraft. It was a reconnaissance-capable aircraft operating at very high altitudes on the brink of space. As we refer to it, on-demand Rickon. It appears extremely fast, sleek, and stealthy. Its hypercruise engines are another feature. For instance, I flew an F-18 Hornet to achieve supersonic flight with the left hand fully forward, maximum afterburner, and a lot of fire coming out of the back, scorching a lot of dinosaurs. As engines and technology advance, far less fire and energy are needed to reach a given position. Additionally, because of the way the aircraft is built, it can super cruise, which allows it to fly longer, quicker, with less fuel, and with less fire. Therefore, Maverick destroys the Dark Star aircraft, not a move that will advance his career. I just so happened to smash an F-18 Hornet, worth $65 million. I overstressed the airplane when I descended from the edge of space to a straight drop to the Pacific, doing roughly Mish 1.7. That didn't help my career either, but I managed to preserve the plane. Unlike Maverick, I didn't leave the room. Let's just say that, as a lieutenant, I was released. I have no idea how he got to be a captain while blowing up planes like that, but he isn't going to be chosen to be an admiral after destroying the Dark Star. Thanks for watching. Kindly like and subscribe for more videos. In the comments section below, please tell me how many you discovered.